Good morning, brethren. It's great to share the word of God together and our time. Uh, blessed for the opportunity to stand in his big feet to share the word of God with you. But it's not uh, an easy task. So like uh, my brother Remo said, so next time when I'm preaching, then I have to pack at the last spot. Anyway, that's just by the way. Um, <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a joy to share the word of God, and uh, the word of God, the Bible says, or the Psalms say, we should keep it in our heart so that it will help us to resist simple acts. So we thank our brother for reading that short passage for us. The title as you can see on the screen is by the nine where are they so this is taken from the book of luke and in luke chapter 17 jesus talked a lot to his disciples he taught them some valuable lessons that we can learn much about most importantly, he taught, he taught them about forcing others to stumble and what we can do when a brother sins against us. That is from verse 3 to 4. And then also talked about faith. And he also talked about what we should see our relationship with God. That is from verse 7 to 10. And then about the kingdom of God and its coming from verse 20 to 20, 37. Our focus this morning is not about the teaching, but an act or a miracle that Jesus did, and which by we healing 10 lepers. And that miracle is only recorded in the book of Luke, but that doesn't make it less significant. It has a valuable lesson to teach us about thanksgiving. So let's get into some background issues. I was reading about the disease of leprosy. And some say that the word leprosy as used in the Bible broadly refers to different kinds of skin diseases. So basically, any kind of skin disease was this was a broader term that referred to uh, leprosy. As one source says, the exact nature of biblical leprosy is not known. Leprosy in the olden days or in the olden time did not have any cure, and so once you have it, you live it with it for life. You live outside of the community until you die. But thank God, with advance in medicine, now we have a cure for that. And according to the World Health Organization, there are 200,000 new cases of leprosy that are reported every year. And in Australia here, health authority record that we have 10 to 20 cases reported every year. And just about two weeks ago, uh, a case was reported in the news in the Northern Territories about uh, someone who has been diagnosed of lep leprosy, and that brings the number to five cases that is reported this year in Australia. So it is an old age disease. You can see from the Bible tab up to this age, we still have the disease with us. Lepers were prohibited from socializing with friends, families, and the general public. And so they were outcasts. They were always, in the olden days, uh, communities were fenced or they were gated. And so they were always found at the outside of the gate. They didn't have any interaction with the entire community their friends, and so because of that, they found a way to bond themselves 
and make their own socialization. They will always live outside of the city where they eventually bond with their fellow lepers. And as we see in the story of 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse 3 to 20, where four lepers were who were outside of the community when the uh, Syrians besieged the Samarians, they later on found that these people, they, they decided that they were hungry. If they, they stayed there, they would die. So they decided to go there to find something or some food to eat. But later on, they realized that the Syrians had even abandoned their, their, their camp because of the miracle that Jesus or God did. And so they went back to the community to inform them. So they were always living outside of the community. And this it shows that because they were always outside, they needed some help. They were always in need of help. The lepers needed healing, just like us, as we are also suffering from spiritual sickness that we call sin. Sin turned us into spiritual lepers, and like leprosy, it also separates us from God and his people, and then eventually kills us. And so all humanities, as we are, need healing. We all need healing from our sickness. And for any healing to occur, there are fundamentally three basic things or elements that are needed. First of all, there must be a sick person or a sick patient. So these lepers were seriously suffering from an incurable disease which caused them to be ostracized from the rest of the society. It is therefore not surprising that they were in desperate need of help. So like leprosy, sin also separates us from God and his people, making us spiritually dead. And as Romans says, in the book, uh, Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. So that is our situation. We were like, like lepers. Secondly, there's, there should be an available physician. So we're talking about what element that need, are needed for healing. And I talk about the father. We need a patient, and then we also need an available physician. Jesus, during his health ministry, heal people of all kinds of diseases, but most importantly, he healed them of their sins, as he forgave them of their sins. It is not surprising that he is called the great physician. He can heal us spiritually and then physically. And third, or the third element is that we also need a patient who realize he or she needs help. So healing will never occur until there, even if there's a doctor and a sick patient, unless the patient seek the help from the doctor. So if you have a doctor and you are sick and you don't seek that help, that healing will never occur. So the 10 lepers realize their condition and sought help from the right person. And I emphasize the right person. Sometimes we seek help, but not from the right person. And so from spiritual point of view, we also need to acknowledge that we are sick. And in fact, from that, more than that, we are dead, as the Bible says, being separated from God. And until we are ready to acknowledge and confess and seek help from God, we our sins, we cannot be healed from our sins. But the problem is that not many people want to get well. Not many people want to acknowledge the fact that they are sick. And not many people who even want to seek help to and from their right persons. So if you read the story carefully, 
and you consider the situation, we can find some similarities between the healing of the lepers and how we are also healed spiritually. First of all, the Lord made a way for them to be healed and he revealed that way. How they were healed. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priests. That's an interesting. These people were asking for mercy. They wanted healing from God. But Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priests. Why? Jesus could have healed them in a different way. But he told them to go and show themselves to the priest because the priest had the authority to declare whether somebody was leprous or not. If you read Leviticus, that was the command given by God to the priest. They have to determine whether, when you have a skin diseases, they have to determine, examine. You see, there are various instructions to determine whether that disease is a leprosy and therefore you need to be separated from the community or not so that is what jesus told them to do so jesus command to the lepers presupposes that the priest will pronounce them to be clean therefore their obedience in going to the priest was an act of faith that anticipated their healing so here they are, they want healing. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. But that is not what we are looking for. God, Jesus, we are looking for healing. And here is the case, we are, we are saying that we should go and show ourselves to the priest. And there is a risk involved there. If you go and we are not, we are not allowed to go at that material point, they have not been healed. If they are found within the community or they are found going to the community, they can be stoned. But that is faith. They believe in Jesus, they took him by his word, and so they made that decision to go and act upon the word of the Lord. So just as Jesus made a way for the lepers to be healed, so he has made a way for us to heal our, our spiritual sickness. And if you read, let me read just a sample of that from Mark chapter 16, verse 15. So we can read the way that God has also provided for us to be healed of our spiritual sickness so that we can have salvation. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole nation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not will be condemned. So that is the way God has also provided for us, that we need to also hear the gospel. We need to believe and act upon that. We also need to be baptized. And through that, we can also have salvation for our soul. So, these people, or these lepers, followed the way that God made for them, and they were healed. So the Bible says, as they were going, they were healed. What did they do? They listen to God or Jesus objectively. They believe him sufficiently, responded immediately, and obey exactly, and they were healed completely. Just want to emphasize that. They listen to God objectively. Believe sufficiently in him, responded immediately, obey exactly what they were asked to do, and then they were healed. So if we compare that in our salvation process, we also should do likewise. We should obey or we should believe 
objectively, sometimes we are subject to our own interpretations and therefore we ask a lot of things. But Jesus asking these people to go and show themselves to the priests, there were a lot of questions that they could have asked themselves. A lot of things could have run through their minds. They could have said, oh, I came to see Jesus, but instead of getting healed, I'm being sent to go and see the priest. What is this? Why don't Jesus say whether he will heal me or not? I want to get healed. Uh, I don't need to go and see the priest. If God is powerful, why not heal me? So these thoughts could have run through their head. What if the priest will say or chase us away? What if I don't, I don't get healed and going to the priest is just a waste of time? The priest, the priest is too far from me. I'm too weak. I'm tired of traveling. So these were some excuses. These were some things that could have interfered with their belief system. But yet, all these, they were very obedient. And so we should also do likewise. Sometimes we want to uh, do things in our own way instead of listening objectively to what God has told us, doing what God has said we should do. People invent their own way of doing things. They want to find their own means of getting salvation. When God says we should uh, listen to hear his word, believe his word, and then be baptized, people will just say, just play these words after me. Just play these words after me. So we call it the sinner's prayers. But that is not what these people did. They were very objective. They followed what God said they should do. And that is faith. Faith is taking God on his word. Like Peter said, Peter was a very a fisherman. He has fished for so long, but he was not getting anything. But when Jesus told him to put the net in, he said, oh, we, we fished for the whole night. We didn't get anything. But because of your word, we will do. That is faith. So sometimes what God asks us to do may not... Uh, may not agree with our own interpretations, but by because of Jesus, God, that is what God said we should do. We also need to do, and that is faith. So that is what we should also do as Christians. If we want to get salvation for our souls, we should listen to God, we should obey Him, we should respond immediately. That is also very important. Some people have excuses when they have, when even you have preached to them, they have believed the word, they still have uh, excuses to not respond. They want to think about it. They want to take time to, to see what can come out of it. But in the Bible, we see that people that said they believe the gospel responded immediately. And even in the book of Acts, we see that some were even baptized at night. So sometimes I find it difficult to believe people when they say they, they have accepted the gospel. But if you tell them to go and, and, and be baptized, that they will be dragging their feet. I don't know what, what is in it. Sometimes you spend the time with the, somebody, he accepts whatever you are telling him or her. But he finds it, the person finds it difficult to uh, get baptized. But that is the response that should come immediately after we have believed the word of God. Now, let's come to the class of the issues that should be the focus for us. So, at this material point, when the lepers have heard the word, their situation were all the same. But when on their way going, and when they were healed, then there came a separation between them. So uh, I will not follow it in the exact manner that the Bible presents it, because I want to emphasize the, the, the example of the one leper 
and so I would like to start with the the failure of the nine lepers to give thanks. So what happened afterwards? We we see that nine of them failed to give thanks to the Lord. Nine of the ten lepers failed to give thanks to the Lord for their healing, and too often we are like these nine lepers. We also fail to give thanks to God. So Jesus asks, where are the nine? Where are the nine? That's a very important question. Does God ask or does he ask of us today? Where are the nine? Does he wonder why his disciples, whom he has saved at a great cost, fail to show their gratitude by giving thanks? What are the causes of their ingratitude? I believe that when we understand why they were showing the attitude, that attitude, it can also help us to understand why sometimes we also do likewise and we may take the necessary steps to remedy the situation. So why were they showing ingratitude? First of all, they fail to appreciate the greatness of the Savior. If they had truly understood how great Jesus was, they would have surely returned to fall at his feet and praise him as those in heaven do. If you read Revelation chapter 4, it tells us how the heavenly hosts uh, praise God all day and night. And then you can also continue from chapter 7, verse 9. They also, that verse also talks about how Jesus, or uh, the heavenly host, always prays God. Perhaps we also have similar problems, realizing how magnificent Jesus Christ is. Sometimes we pay less service to that by singing songs like, Oh, how great thou art! Worthy of praise is Christ our Redeemer. But within our hearts, we do not really recognize these facts. And if indeed we, we, we do believe, we will praise Him more often and more enthusiastically. So that's one thing that these lepers fail to appreciate. Secondly, they also fail to appreciate the wonders of their healing. They forgot about their star states. They were like the Israelites. You know, when the Israelites were taken out from the Egyptian captivity, sorry, from the Egyptian slavery, long after they passed the, the Red Sea, they soon forgot about their star states. They began to even complain to God about the situation. And some were even referring back to the enjoyment that the food that they were eating in, in Egypt, forgetting about the state in which they, they were. And so they proved to be ungrateful in their deliverance. In the same way, we also tend to forget our, about our past situation and where as we were sinners before we became Christians. And so Paul sought to remind the Ephesians, the Christian in Ephesus, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, let's see what Paul told the Ephesian people of the state in which they were before they became Christian. And that is how we are also. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without Christ in without having no hope and without God in the world. So that was the state of the Ephesian church, and that is our state, the state that we also were before we became Christians. We had no hope, we had no God, 
there was no opportunity for us to gather here and share the fellowship together. And so that is what we shouldn't forget. And if we tend to forget about this state, how we were, then we are also proving to be like the ten lepers. And then finally, they failed to appreciate their obligation to be thankful. Saying thank you to somebody after he has done something for you is just a simple courtesy that we show to people when you have benefited from them. And so for the nine lepers, we can say they did not even practice the uh, they did not even practice this common courtesy of showing appreciation for what God has done for them. And so ideally, those of us who have been saved are to give constant thanks to God. And when we fail to give thanks to God for our salvation, we are not fulfilling the obligation placed on us, both by our human nature and by our divine Lord. So that is what we shouldn't do. That is an example of the ten lepers. We shouldn't, nine lepers, sorry, we shouldn't follow. What should we then follow? Now let's come back to the the, the one leper and how he showed thankfulness. And that is what as Christians we are supposed to be doing. For those of us who have followed the path of salvation, we need to follow the example of the the ten leper, and let's go back to the the story quickly and remind ourselves what, what happened. Verse 15 of Luke chapter 17. So let's see. Then one of them when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God with a loud voice, and then, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. So what did this leper do that we should, one leper do that we should all emulate as Christian? Bible say that he remembered where he had who had healed him and from what? That was, he actually remembered what has taken place, the change that has taken place. So realizing the great change that he had occurred in his life, he returned and expressed gratitude to God. As Christians, do we remember who has saved us and from what? Do we remember how we were once separated from God as we we just read from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Do you remember that we were bought at a price? Christ shared his life, his blood on the cross for us as Christians so that we can become saved, so that we can have a relationship with God. And if we do, then we should always be grateful unto God for that. The other thing that this one leper did that we should also emulate or follow the example is that he glorified God with a loud voice. That's what verse 15 said. He fell at Jesus' feet and glorified God with a loud voice. Do we give thanks for God for our spiritual leprosy that we've been uh, healed by glorifying him with a loud voice? One way we can do that is by singing praises to him. And so if you read Let's turn our Bible to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. It's a common verse or verse of the Bible that we always emphasize. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. What does it say of S? Let the word of God or Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. And so as Christians, 
we need to show our thankfulness unto God by singing praises unto Him. You need to show that. And I like the emphasis that Ephesians chapter 5, in relation to that same issue, Ephesians 5.19. Also raises similar issues. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 says, Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. So we should sing joyfully, we should sing and make melody in our heart. So sometimes if we sing and we are not sure, the way we are singing does not show that we, we appreciate what God has done for us. We should sing with all joyfulness, with all our heart, and with all the commitment and the voice that we can to praise God. So we should also sing enthusiastically. That shows that we appreciate what God has done for us. But most importantly, we can glorify God with a loud voice by telling others about what Christ has done for us and what he will do for them as well. And then, finally, he subjected himself before God by falling at his feet. And that showed submissiveness. He bowed before Christ. He was very submissive. And if we are thankful for what Christ did for our salvation, we should also show submission. We should, in effect, say whatever you tell us, of, we will do. As the songwriter John H. Samis, he wrote the hymn, Trust and Obey. And in the last stanza, he said, Then in fellowship suite, we will sit at his feet, or we will walk by his side in the way. What he says, we will do. Where he stands, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Give thanks to the Lord. What he says we will do, where he sent, we will go. That is the submission or the submissive act we are to uh, engage ourselves as Christian. To say that whatever Christ tells us we will do, whatever he sends us, we will go. And if we do that, we will be showing our appreciation for what Christ has done for us. We also need to glorify God and give thanks to Jesus. And Paul emphasized the need for thankfulness in many of his epistles. For example, let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. Let there be no filthy, nor foolish talk, nor crude joke, which which are out of place, but instead, let there be thanks given. So Paul emphasized the need for us as Christians to be thankful unto God. That was in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. Same way in Colossians chapter 4, he still talk about the need for thanks giving. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 2. Continue steadfastly in prayers. Be watchful in it with thanksgiving. And then finally, we can also look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. So emphasizing the need for thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so, thankfulness is an act that we Christians should always engage ourselves. And this one says, in all situations, give thanks in all circumstances. So whatever your circumstances, we are to give thanks, whether it is good. And as human beings, we only tend to give thanks to things that are 
favorable unto us. But he said in all situations, whatever situation that we find ourselves, we need to give thanks to God. And so some countries like the United States of America and Canada, they have a day of thanksgiving, a day that is set aside for citizens to express their gratitude for their blessings. But for us as Christians, every day should be a thanksgiving day. We cannot just say this a particular day that we should give them because there are a lot of blessings that God gives to us every day and therefore we should always give thanks to God. As we conclude, we might ask, as Jesus did, where are the nine? When all of us gather together to worship God and only a few of us are present, where are the nine? Are you among the one shepherd, uh, the one leper, or among the nine? When only few of us as a congregation give liberally, where are the nine? Are you all not blessed materially by God? And when few members of the congregation study the Bible regularly, do pray regularly and frequently visit or seek to spread the gospel and assist in the organization of the church, where are the nine? The way for us to show gratitude for what Christ has done for us is to accept the responsibility of living a Christian life of thankfulness. One question still remains. Will we be like the nine ungrateful lepers, or will we be like the one thankful leper? May the good Lord bless us, may he strengthen us, so that we can always be like the one leper, and showing, always showing appreciation for what he has done for us. Shall we on our feet?